안녕하세요. everyone i'm back with a second part of the video so if you have watched the video three days ago i reviewed three different chicken restaurants and um i hope you liked it so as i said before in that video if you have any other opinions please remember to visit the description box so that you can do the survey when they come over then they will know what you really want so today i'll be doing part two of um this uh video so it will be a continuation and i'll be trying two different kinds of food today and tomorrow so today I'll be trying something that a lot of you must be familiar with be it you have it in Singapore or you already saw someone eating it in um, dramas, in Korean dramas so today I am at a restaurant called Pok Chang Dong Sundubu but when they enter, they have plans to enter Singapore but when they do it, they will be changing their concept and the name of the restaurant will be this Di Kore because it's short form for delicious Korean restaurant okay guys so the food is out already and I'm really really excited to try it because I don't know the visual just looks really tasty to me maybe because I haven't eaten but yeah okay anyways the main concept of this restaurant is they're trying to replicate um, from what I think is like a Singapore zicha stall ordering style like remember I showed you this just now you know how in zicha stall we all, always order with the paper then they will be like okay you want this then they take this you want this then they take this so the main concept here is um, they're trying to provide to you a Korean home cooked concept home cooked food concept so it's like they give it to me in a like cute and small portion and also the price is very affordable in that sense so there is five menus here today we have the chicken i mean in korea you cannot live without chicken right okay and then tteokbokki there is the bulgogi as well the sizzling cheese rice Ooh. and last but not least because it's a sundubu chongmunjom they are known for sundubu there is Yum. Okay, so I'm just gonna go ahead and try and tell you what it tastes like. Mm. When they say spicy, it's not as spicy as I think. I don't know, I mean, is it because my tolerance for spicy is quite high? But it's not it's not that like good though. More soup, more soup. It reminds me of comfort food My bakut teh in Singapore Nice Bulgogi mm. I don't really order bulgogi when I go to Singapore because I feel like I can make it for myself but Let's see Mmm Mmm yeah, I don't know if bulgogi is supposed to have like fatty meat, but there's no fatty meat here. The thing is, I don't really eat bulgogi when I go out to restaurants as well. But I did try bulgogi when I was in Singapore because it's such a common thing in all Korean restaurants, right? And my verdict is, I feel like this is a bit better than how Singaporeans do it. Because I think, I'm not sure if it's hard to find the ingredients of making bulgogi in Singapore, but it's always sweeter than usual to me but this one is quite balanced the sweetness and the spiciness it's a very new taste i think because of the cheese and the corn coming together but it's not, like I said, right? Because it's red, I think there's. I'm not sure if it's kochujang or not, but. I have no idea how to. If you came for sundubu, it's a little weird for me to eat it together. Because this one has a lot of flavor already, but this is very, very flavorful also. Because it's mixed rice. There's a lot of. But I can taste the individual food. 
which is the smam, the corn, and the seaweed, and even the sauce. So, mm -hmm. with chicken and tteokbokki also. Um, as you as you know from the first episode, I've been trying a lot of tteokbokki and a lot of chicken. So maybe my standard is a bit high right now, but let's try. Hmm. Mm. This This is so nice It's very crispy And Like I said I've been trying really a lot of chicken And I really high expectation but I didn't expect this much from this Because it looks kind of It looks kind of plain right Like it's just Karage I mean karage is a Japanese The way they say it But it's just chicken I need to explore Mm. This chicken is good. This is good Korean fried chicken. I'm gonna try the tteokbokki now. I don't really expect much from this, but <laughs> oh, but it's cute. They have this noodle top thing. I think you guys will like this a lot because you know how tteokbokki is always those just this this normal one. I'll try to make it different with the noodle noodle top. I think. Mm. I don't eat much tteokbokki in Korea, but well, firstly, I think this is a really interesting idea. Hmm, but I wish it's a little bit more spicy. Hmm. Okay, this one is quite normal to me. Okay, so that's kind of my variety after eating the sundubu here. So I'll be heading to the next place tomorrow. I'm really excited to show you what it is. Um, I'll probably tell you what it is when I get there tomorrow. And yeah, thank you so much for joining me in my meal today. Okay, hi guys. I'm back at the very, very last place of um, this project. So. Um, here I am at a Shabu Shabu restaurant. I know it's a bit um, weird that they kind of incorporated this into this whole project, but I think I can, by walking into this restaurant, I can kind of feel like a Korean vibe already. I'm not very sure is it just the setting of it, or I don't know, maybe because there's Korean people here, but the thing is, um, I'm really, really excited to try this um, soup restaurant thing, because I really really love soup and I don't know if it's just a Chinese thing but I believe all Singaporeans love soup right? And this place is called Modern Shabu House. So the concept of this place is you know how all our Shabu Shabu restaurant even though there is like no limit for um, the food that you can order there's always a time limit and that's the thing that we were like ah oh, but it's not enough time but here there is no time limit that's the best thing so so after all this is what we really mean by no limit right? You know what I mean? Okay, so today I ordered the signature set which is um, their most famous and popular set I believe and then so they, all, they provided us with the vegetables which is free for like I said just now and there is pork as well as beef and the thing is in this restaurant they have seven different types of um, soup base which is I mean it's quite common to have seven different types of soup base in Singapore but what's so special about this Korean shabu shabu restaurant is you know how in Korea, every time you eat something that is like on a hot plate, you get to cook something after that and this is what they try to bring to this restaurant as well. So, you know in our, you know in Singapore when you go to like Mukata or like Hai Kilao or like this Shilifang, you know, they don't really have an after meal. So you either eat the noodles together with it or you just order rice on the side. But here, they offer a various different type of meals that you eat after.
so nice. about this place is that you know because we came to a really really nice place and it's a really really like atas feeling and the fact that it's only 53 dollars you can't find that kind of price in orchard okay so now i'm gonna try the sauce how different it is i don't think this one will be much different because it's sesame sauce it's quite standard mm. But you can never go wrong with sesame sauce. <laughs> but this is a bit different. They call it ponzu sauce. I wonder what it tastes like. It tastes nice just now when I just tasted it like that. But. Mm. It blends well with the meat. Not too thick. Something light. If you don't like, like the fatty fatty taste. Okay, so as you can see, the soup is almost done already and I want to change the soup because I wanted to try a different flavour but the thing is, the main part about this place is you can cook something, the post meal, after finishing the soup. So for this mushroom soup, they gave an option of top-up which is um, rice with something on top of it, like topos, alright? And then there is mu uh, mushroom risotto also. So I chose to go with the Korean style mushroom top-up so they're preparing it and I'll show you when it comes. Okay, so the top up is ready and I totally didn't expect this. It's so interesting. Mm. Mm. There's not really a Korean taste but there's a Chinese flavour to it. What do you think? Mm. Like having this after some? I think it's a perfect ending. You know, like you're always so full, but you just want to end something. I don't know, is it because I stay here too long that I need always something behind the soup? But this is a really new concept to me when I first came to Korea also. And I think everybody should make this concept a habit. <laughs> shabu shabu, then you have to eat rice or noodle. What's this one? It's tomato! Oh my gosh, this is so interesting! Okay, so the really really interesting part about this buffet It's also, like, I, I call it a buffet right? Because it's not, it's refillable The thing is, you can order extra meat Anytime that you want on this cutie iPad tea So, when the order is in ready, all you have to do is go to the refill button Click refill and then you just put it into your cart. Oh my god, they sent me me. Yeah. Oh. So interesting. They use the robot to <laughs> send me. Say bye. Oh. Oh yeah. So smart. Mm, the tomato soup tastes so nice. It's very sweet and the right amount of saltiness. Okay, so now I'm gonna try the soup with the meat. Beef first.
You know how in Singapore, right, when you eat shabu shabu, they always have a half, then you can have soup on each side. But I like how that here they, it doesn't mix. You can have the mushroom soup first, you can change to another soup whenever you want, even though there's an extra cost. I guess it's worth it. So, our very last post meal of today's episode is pasta! Can you imagine they made like an Asian thing to a Western food and they make pasta. It totally looks like a normal. Oh my gosh! Just nice. Just now it was in the day. We had soup and now it's night so we have pasta. So you can just order wine on the way. Okay, I'm gonna try. What will it taste like? How is it like? Pasta. It's pasta. Right, it's pasta. It's, pa it's pasta. It's pasta. It's, it's real pasta. Yo, this pasta, man. What? It was just now, it was a. It's pasta now. It's pasta. Um. Guys, I'm very very touched by the food today and even though I was very very full, I finished everything. So today's verdict is 10 out of 10, no 11 out of 10, no 12 out of 10. It's so nice and I feel like if this restaurant really goes to Singapore, I would really really urge you guys to try it because it's a very very different concept from all the shabu shabu that I've ever tasted in Singapore. I mean, if you can come up with a new concept within the two years I was away, kudos to you. But this is really very new and special. So if you're watching this video once again, if you see the food or there's something that you like or you don't like or you really want to try the food, please remember to go to the description box, do the survey so that they have more weight coming to come to Singapore because everybody's kind of... The Korean companies here are kind of lost, like they don't know what we really like so I'm kind of the one that says it but I'm not representative of all you guys because I have preference so if you guys have person, preference, please remember to leave it in the survey um, I will leave the links in the description box down below in the description box down below and if you have any other comments about this video please uh, write it down so that I can read and I can give feedback to you know the people here and yeah I just want to thank you for tuning in to this part 2 and if you haven't watched part 1 remember to go and watch it because it's really really good chicken and beer stuff with top also if you like topoki and yeah thank you so much once again for watching this video and I'll see you in the next one bye oh, I think you are exotic now